some food. Please go take care of yourselves. I appreciate y'all for being here. But yes, we are having a very, very different stream today. I even changed my category. I was like, what do I put this under? I guess this is kind of a podcasty kind of stream. Um, let me pop over here just so y'all can see the incentives. So we reached our goal of 250. In fact, we're over our goal. Uh, we reached $315 yesterday for the Trans Lifeline. So I've added some additional stretch goals and some additional milestones. You can see all those there. I think it also prints those in the chat. Uh, I will be continuing this fundraiser until April 14th. Uh, that Friday will be my last stream because next week I'm on vacation and I felt like two days just wasn't wasn't enough to really honor the cause, even though it's kind of at a different time than the Transgender Week of Visibility. I wanted to put that up there. And if you want to donate, Bloodhunter, you got it. You just do exclamation donate. That'll pull up the link. Um, please take care of yourselves first. There is no requirement to donate. Um, but if you do want to chip in and you have the extra funds, we appreciate it. R.I.P. Our beloved daddy. No. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. R.I.P. Daddy. <laughs> So part of what motivated me to do the fundraiser is I just joined a stream team. I am now a Treppy, and they did their annual fundraiser raising over $16,000 for the Games for Love uh, charity. And I was like, that is amazing energy. I want to be a part of that. And so I'm doing my own little baby stream. And here we are. I feel like this is really zoomed out for some reason. You can barely see my face. Hello. That's my face. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I guess we're going to go. So this is my very first PowerPoint stream. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, so as you uh, are hanging out with us, if you'd like to donate, right? You just do exclamation donate. Um, there are incentives. We're hanging out, having a good time. Thank you all for being here. Honey, I think I saw you. Hello, honey. Honey Bee, if you don't know Honey Bee, you are missing out. She is, they are amazing. Um, okay, so I'm also going to put up uh, in the chat uh, our Let's Talk. So if you want to follow along with the talk, there is a PowerPoint that I put together uh, on a PDF. If you follow that link, that'll take you right to the document. You can download it and follow along as we have our chat. I thought that might be useful because it's heckin' chaos out there right now. Heckin' chaos, heckin' chaos. Now I gotta find my scene. That's not the scene. Where did I put it? Did I not put it on my thing? I didn't put it on my thing, so we'll click it. Bloop. Okay, it's loaded. I'm gonna turn off this music because it's a little distracting to me. All right, y'all. Again, I'm a Fector of Change. My pronouns are he, they. I am a streamer here on Twitch. I'm a cultivator of cozy chaos, but I am also a psychotherapist in my day job. And I thought that this was a very, very relevant topic, uh, given the state of affairs of what's going on here in the great old U.S. of A. If you didn't know it already, here's a little snapshot of what's going on with anti-trans legislation here in the United States. We've got 477 anti-LGBTQ bills moving in about 37 states right now. 16 anti-LGBTQ laws have been signed in 2023 alone, seven of them banning life-saving medical care for trans youth. These figures, I gathered this presentation I put together on Monday. I think more stuff has gone down <laughs> in the last few days uh, since I created this presentation. So these numbers may not even be accurate. It might be higher, which is absolutely terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. So some of the most recent updates uh, of the situation, uh, Georgia, Iowa, Kentucky, have all passed some extremely harmful new legislation. There are some other states 
on the other side of the aisle that have gone in over and above and beyond for transgender and transgender non-binary folk. New Mexico is passing a bill that protects the right to gender affirming care and the Minnesota governor, he signed an executive order. So an executive order only lasts as long as the governor is there. <laughs> um, but Minnesota is increasingly becoming a bit of a, a trans refugee state for folks to be able to go to to get access to care without having to have fear for their life. A lot of the information gathered in our presentation today uh, comes from that link at the bottom there. Erin in the Morn is a independent journalist uh, and she has the most thorough coverage of this topic that I've seen so far. I don't even see the major news outlets covering a lot of this material. So I'm very, very thankful that she's there. Um, she does have a Substack if you are interested in learning more about what's going on and keeping up to date. I would say that's probably the place I would cue you in to check out. She's very informed. She has a great way of presenting information. Um, and she has a subscription. Should you want to support her in that way fin financially, if you have the funds, I would definitely recommend it as a good use of your money because she is doing amazing work, amazing work, keeping us surprised of all of this nonsense that's going on. So here's the big map. Here's the big map of the United States and what is their status right now for the anti-trans legislative risk. The states that are in red are the worst uh, actors here. The ones in a slightly lighter shade uh, are the ones that are at the highest risk within the next couple years of joining that club. And then the blue states towards the bottom are the states that have protections. So New York, California, Oregon, Washington, Colorado, New Mexico, all of those states in the dark blue uh, do have some legislation on the books that does uh, protect folks. But the rest of the country, as you can see here, it's, it's, not, it's not pretty. It's awful. I didn't know it was that bad. It is. It is absolutely that bad. This is why I wanted to cover this topic, because I don't see this coverage anywhere, anywhere outside of, um, you know, the materials that Aaron has been putting through together. You live in one of those red states. I'm so sorry, Chris. That, that sucks. I'm privileged to live in one of the blue states. Um, but that, that privilege that I have doesn't change the fact that this is awful, this is horrible, this is unacceptable, and there are so many people who have legit fear for what is going on in their life right now. So I wanted to have this talk uh, for those reasons, because this is, this is a really important issue that is kind of not on a lot of people's radar. I've even, you know in the Twitch community shared a little bit of, you know, what's going on when I've been in other streams and I haven't seen a lot of people have awareness of, of these facts. So here I am, I'm presenting it. We're talking about it and it's going to be okay. Um, today is in fact the national transgender day of Visib visibility. And so there are, uh, active movements right now all over. There are marches, there are youth who are gathering, there are adults gathering, there are a lot of people in protest. Um, there are resources for that. I don't have those included in this presentation, but there are resources if you are interested in supporting people who are active in this. Um, oh, I see a donation. I just can't read it. <laughs> it's just blended with the white. <laughs> Thank you. I'll see it in a minute when, when my Nix It Up picks it up. But thank you for the donation. I will put a sticker on. <laughs> Where are my stickers? We'll put it right here. Kama, thank you for $20. Donate to the Trans Lifeline. I appreciate you. I believe there's an incentive for that, and I can't remember what my incentives are right now. But I will get to incentives after the presentation. <laughs> Jumpin' Jacks. Okay, roll the d20. All right, we'll do that after the presentation. Uh, my nephew's trans. This is important to me. All right, well, I'm glad that we're having the ability to talk about it. Absolutely. Everyone has a nephew, a co-worker's friend, a, a sibling. This doesn't affect just transgender people. This it affects everybody. 
this affects everybody. Trans rights are human rights. If we go after one, we go after all. And so we need to really have this discussion. All right, moving forward. So the high risk states, these are the ones that are slowly kind of moving in that direction. Thank you, trans rights are human rights. These are the states that are kind of moving in that direction um, that we want to, you know, kind of be aware of. Uh, they haven't quite entered that worst state category, but there's stuff in the works going on. And, and yeah, yeah, the ones that have the little yellow caution symbols, those are the states that have the most imminent risk uh, to be heading in that category of what's going on in their legislatures. But we're just kind of going through this a little bit by little bit. So let's talk about these worst states. What's what's actually happening in some of these states? Uh, what are some of the specific pieces of legislation? What do they do? So one example is Kentucky. In Kentucky, uh, they just passed uh, Senate Bill 150, which tells doctors how to transition youth. Not only does it do that, that bill in particular, uh, it bans medical care for youth. It forces the misgendering of youth. It is a don't say gay bill, very similar to the one in Florida and much more. It is it is one of the worst bills to come out outside of what we're seeing in Florida. Um, so this bill passed the legislature. It made it to the Kentucky governor's desk. The governor vetoed the bill. And then the legislature voted to override this bill because they were that insistent that this gross piece of legislation needed to be passed. So I'm going to share a video. I'm going to share a video with you guys of what that vote looked like, what was happening. So as the Senate and the House, I think it was the House actually, as the House was working to override this governor's veto, protesters <laughs> erupted and began to lock arms and chant. Um, not only was that happening, but Representative Pamela Stevenson was giving a very passionate and stark speech about her opposition to that bill being passed. Plunge, you might have seen it on Twitter. It's an amazing video. So we're going to watch it here together on stream because I think it's a good one. Um, just to kind of give you a sampling of, 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 you know, the passion of what's going on, of what people are talking about. So give me a second. I need to find that scene in my um, OBS here. Let me switch this over there. Okay. So it is a is it is a passionate passionate <laughs> video. So I will I will give you that warning first before we watch it. So if you want to take a little break, if that's a little too much material, it's about three minutes and forty five seconds. We're gonna watch this together. Um, before we continue the presentation, just giving you that warning. It is a passionate video. There's no violence. There's nothing that's going on in it other than some heated talk. Um, but if that's not your bag, totally get it. Just giving you that content warning before we proceed. And let's watch this video.
Yeah. It's amazing. It is simply amazing. When I saw that video the other day, I I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to react. It was a little emotional because I didn't know. Like, this is happening right now in this country. I know we have some folks in chat who are in the U.S., so I get it. I get it. Thank you, Candy Bomb. Appreciate you. Another $20. That's more jumping checks for me later. Appreciate that. You are sweet. Here's another sticker on me. Thank you. <laughs> but I don't know what's going on, y'all. I don't know what's going on. It will get better. It will get better. We will, we will work through this, but we got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. We've got to advocate about it. We've got to be informed about it. It's really, really important that we have discussions like we're having today with each other to support each other and really get into stopping this awful, awful hate. All right. So let me get back to our presentation. I'm still figuring out how to make this more efficient, but you know, <laughs> I'm baby streamer. I'm baby streamer. I'm baby streamer. I'm still learning y'all. I'm still learning. <laughs> exactly. Major news outlets aren't, they aren't, they aren't talking about this stuff. So that's just one bill of the, you know, was it 477 on the previous slide? One of those bills in Kentucky, it's terrible. So some other awful places where there's legislation, Florida uh, as a state has been, been very notorious for these issues. So they've banned Medicaid coverage, not just for trans kids, but for trans adults. They have an agenda to detransition adults, not just kids, which I think is terrible. It's terrible. Um, they also have a new bill coming up that would fine people $35,000 because you accuse someone of being transphobic. Even if they're out of state, they're going to try to target people to prevent that from happening. Um, schools have had to rip apart their libraries. I don't know if anyone has seen those articles about what textbooks are being approved uh, by their state education department. And this is not new. This is not new. Florida has been you know, increasingly moving in these directions it was April of last year. Uh, I got a bulletin from the Florida State Department of Health because I am a licensed provider in the state of Florida. And they told me and every other provider that was on that list that it is very ill-advised and um, not feasible to use the pronouns a person who comes to me uses, that it's pretty dangerous to do that. Literally, the Florida Department of Health was advising me <laughs> to not do the simplest of trans-affirming care, and that is just simply honor someone's identity. Um, so this is not a, a move that just started. This was last year that I got that email. Um, some of these bills have been in legislative cycles since 2019, 2020. It is all that's just now coming to a head. This is not new information. This is not stuff that's just happening right now. This is stuff that has been slowly progressing into this direction. Um, Florida, I believe, also has in the works uh, some suggestions to try and expand their, uh, quote, don't say gay bill um to worsen you know the situation for trans and non-binary youth to endanger their lives um so florida is one of the higher uh risk states uh for trans folk right now um some other places uh texas uh, Texas is home to that bill that was weaponizing the DFPS. That's uh, their version of Child Protective Services. Literally, if your child is transgender, uh, they were threatening to take away your kids, to take away your kids and throw them into foster care. Um, they uh, have about 34 anti-trans bills uh, in their in their cycle right now. Texas is uh, not doing great with that. Tennessee. Uh, they just passed a bill uh, banning drag in public that could even target pride. You're starting to see that come up a lot where drag queens 
uh, seem to be the problem. You don't see that, uh, you know, for for straight men who dress in drag. It's just the gay men. It's just the gay men. Let's call it what it is. <laughs> uh, so that's happening there. Um, all of these states, all of these states here uh, with the arrows on there have all passed gender affirming care bans for trans youth. All of them. And I think is this next slide about Oklahoma. Oklahoma, of all the states uh, in the red here, has the most amount of anti-trans bills of any per state proposed. Um, so that's the danger zone, y'all. That's the danger zone. So let's let's switch to the other side for a moment. Let's talk about where are some positive uh, movements in terms of protection under the law. So earlier I mentioned New Mexico recently just passed a law to protect gender affirming care. Minnesota's governor signed that executive order. Uh, you know, a lot of people are, you know, moving some of these bluer states as a means of self-protection for their families. Um, <clears throat> all of these states here, Hawaii, Colorado, and Washington, they have very explicit transgender healthcare guidelines and policies that cover surgeries often when coverage in other states wouldn't. So they're really um, stepping above and beyond uh, to offer that coverage to folks. Um, these states here, Washington, D.C., Massachusetts, Connecticut, and California, they're all considering passing similar policies to the ones that Minnesota has passed. Uh, to give folks that ability to, you know, get the access to care that they might need or their, their kids. So that's happening there. And I think I missed a slide. There we go. Right? Yes. Here it is. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, there's other states like Oregon, New York, Massachusetts, and Vermont have all had strong uh, history of transgender protections. And every year, every year, there continues to be a little more growth on that regard. I know in New York State in particular, <clears throat> we've been trying to pass uh, the Gender Equality Act uh, agenda for a long time. I think I was a community college student <laughs> when I first heard about that. It was a lot of long time ago. Um, New York still has some work to do. Uh, to legally protect uh, LGBTQ folks, but they do have a history of having some protections. Um, I found it interesting. I had to do a sexual harassment training for one of my uh, jobs as uh, their manual trainings. And New York City has a different set of guidelines that the rest of the state does on certain laws, including uh, sexual... Um, harassment in the in new york city uh discriminating against someone because of their gender or sexuality is clustered into the law similarly to sexual harassment towards uh you know let's say a, a woman in an office situation um so the video that we watched was from a new york city firm for an hr kind of thing so it was kind of interesting to learn that even in new york state there's such a disparate difference and how the laws apply. Um, but yeah, each of these states is moving in the right direction. So that leads to the question, why is protecting trans affirming care important? I think that a lot of people maybe don't know what it is. They might not understand why is it an important thing to do. Um, some people think of it as being uh, indulgent, I guess, uh, for whatever reason. Um, but there's a lot of reasons why we need to protect these, these things. One of the biggest is about suicide. So trigger word, we're going to be talking about suicide, uh, in our talk today. Uh, LGBT youth are four times as likely to attempt suicide than their peers. Almost 2 million of these kids consider suicide every year. And about every 45 seconds, there's one of these kiddos that attempts. The folks who are on the transgender and non-binary spectrum of that population are to two to two and a half times more likely to have those experiences, to have those symptoms, to have those attempts. Um, I've heard another figure say that they're 70% more likely 
to attempt suicide than their cisgender straight peers. I don't know where that statistic came from, but it did come to my awareness recently. I just can't remember where the heck I got that number. Um, but it stuck out. It stuck out as like, holy cow, holy cow. Uh, Kama says, I don't understand why these laws are being passed. How does someone being trans affect it? Yes, yes, yes. I, I share in that anger. I share in that anger. Yes. So the bottom line here uh, that I want to share as a message to you guys, and I'm hoping you can share this message uh, to the people that you care and love about, trans affirming care is suicide prevention. That's what it is. It's what it is. By providing this kind of care, we're saving lives. The alternative to banning this care, to not giving kids what they need, is they're going to kill themselves. That's the alternative. And we can't let that happen. We can't. So, yeah. 110 bills banning gender affirming care have been introduced in state legislatures just this year alone. Just this year alone. So, the CDC, I just want to contrast this for a moment. Because a lot of the rhetoric I've heard in conservative circles about why we need to protect kids by banning this care, um, why we need to get drag queens uh, away from children is that, you know, they, they hurt children or they kill children or they do all these awful things to children. But I want to point out this fact here that the CDC has gone through some of their data. Death by firearm is right now the number one leading cause of death for children in the United States. Far outpaces cancer, cardiac issues, car accidents. Firearm death is the number one leading cause of death among children in the United States. So the question I have, okay, so if these laws are here to protect children. If that's the goal of banning trans-affirming care, Where's the push for gun safety legislation? I'm not trying to say that I'm advocating for this. I'm for or against it here. I'm just saying if that is such an important fact that they want to protect kids, the facts state that's the leading cause. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't get it. I don't get it. So... I'm not going to go into all the details uh, today of what trans affirming care is. I will talk just simply about what social transition is. Simple social transition, it's the number one easiest form of care that we can give to trans and non-binary youth. And it only involves honoring their identity, using their pronouns, using the name they choose, that's all it takes to be affirming of a young person who has this experience. Um, there is a, a study that was done by the Trevor Project researchers, <clears throat> and they said that young adults from highly accepting families attempt suicide at significantly reduced rates, uh, about 31% compared to 57 Huge difference. Huge difference there. Just by having a family member that they can rely on, that they can talk to, that accepts them. So another piece of this talk, not only do I want you guys to understand that trans-affirming care is suicide prevention, but recognize that it's something that everyone of us can do. It's not hard. This is not difficult stuff. Um, and some of those bills are preventing people from doing this. They're preventing teachers from using the pronouns of their students. They're forcing schools in some of these states to out these children to their families. It's horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. Um, just saying that. I think, I think this is just one thing we can all do in our lives to make things a little bit better. So here are a few tips um, for y'all on being a better ally. So one of the first things that I have really incorporated into my daily life is when I introduce myself, I give my name and I give my pronouns almost in the same breath, right? I'm a factor of change and my pronouns are he, they, right? To me, my pronouns have become synonymous with my name 
And by sharing that, I'm putting out there to someone who might be somewhere in this spectrum of identity, hey, like, I'm, I'm making sure that I put that out there in the world that, that, you know, that's important to me. And do, does every transgender person share their pronouns with me? Probably not. Probably not. I'm not saying it's an obligation, but me doing that first, I think is an important thing to do. A second tip here, if someone does give you the privilege of knowing what their pronouns are, please remember them. Please honor that. Please respect that. And if you make a mistake, it's very normal. It's absolutely very normal. Just correct it quickly and move on. If you make a mistake and then you spend 10 minutes apologizing about how horrible you are, you, you're the problem there. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that don't do that if you make a mistake just acknowledge it quickly and move on correct it and move on you don't need to spend all day uh, apologizing because you're making the situation much worse for yourself and you're making that situation much worse for that individual <laughs> so please just just do what you got to do if you make a mistake it's not a big deal uh disclosure right so I'm, again, privileged to live in one of those blue states uh, where my status as a person in the queer community is less of a danger. But there are a lot of people who don't have that experience. And the region I live in has some places where that's not okay, where that's not safe. So if someone does disclose to you their identity, do not share that with anyone else. That is for you to know. <laughs> Disclosing that identity can really lead to discomfort and may in fact compromise their safety. Um, keep that in mind if somebody does make disclosure to you. Um, transitioning. It looks very different for different people. There's no right way to express your gender. Uh, some people, maybe physically or medically, transition. Others don't. Others don't, right? There, there's no one size fits all path um, to to identifying as trans or non-binary. Um, kind of piggybacking on that idea. Don't ask questions about a person's body, their genitals, what their medical history is, what they have planned for medical procedures, right? What's their previous name? Don't dead name them. Um, or ask those invasive details about life prior to transition. That's that's not acceptable conduct. If this is somebody who's close to you and they're wanting to share those details, I mean, that's fine. That's cool. But I see this happen a lot uh, where people ask these really inappropriate questions. Um, it's, it's similar to like, let's say, you know, you're a pregnant woman. And someone decides that they want to just touch your stomach completely unwarranted who you don't really know, because that's a thing people do to pregnant women. I don't know why they do that. Or if you happen to be a black person and people just want to touch your hair and they just do it. And it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> why are you doing that? Stop it. Stop it. Respect boundaries, people. <laughs> be an ally. Don't be a jerk. Be an ally. Um, so those are just a few tips. I wanted to give you guys um, accountability is important. I forgot. I have another page here. So that second tab is the same. But be accountable. Remember, it's it's not about your intention. It's about the impact. You may make mistakes and you might hurt somebody's feelings. And that's fine. Right. Just be an adult about it. Be an adult about it. Best apology is one that doesn't make excuses or invalidate the other person's feelings. If you screw up, just just own it. Own your shit. Please, please. And again, don't ask those questions. <laughs> so if y'all are interested in additional resources uh, following up this talk, uh, here are some that I would recommend to you. The Human Rights Campaign is a very large nonprofit organization that does a lot of advocacy work about all sorts of LGBTQ issues. They are a fantastic organization. Um, great values. The Trevor Project is a lifeline specifically for LGBTQ youth. 
uh, for mental health crises and other uh, challenges. They raise some money for other projects. They do a lot of research. Um, a lot of their information uh, I used uh, putting together the information in this talk. So feel free to give them a follow and check out what they're up to. The Trans Law Center um, is an organization that's new to me. I recently came across them. Uh, they're very similar to doing what the Human Rights Campaign is doing, trying to trying to deal with these laws legally, trying to stop them, trying to challenge them, trying to do what they can to upend this nonsense. The Trans Lifeline uh, is the the charity that we are benefiting today. It is uh, a lifeline run for and by trans people for all sorts of resources and things that might be useful. It's the or agency we're raising money for for this couple weeks. And then I also want to shout out Aaron in the Morning, uh, a journalist who's who's really at the core of all of this information. Um, she's on TikTok. She's great. Love her. Love her so much. Um, but do give her a follow uh, on her website there. She has a stack. Uh, if you pick up the um, the PDF of our talk for today, it's right there at that link. Uh, you should be able to click that link. Uh, it's also listed in the presentation as well. Um, but those are just some resources I thought would be good to share with y'all if you want to get more involved. And I think that's our talk for today. So didn't want to go too long. Didn't want to go too long. Just enough that we can be angry about it. <laughs> Get that information to you. Um, and just really give you that context about why am I talking about this? Why is this money being raised? This is exactly why. This is exactly why. We need to talk about it. We need to know about it. And we need to stop it in any way we can. So thank you all for joining me for that talk. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to be moving into our normal Fantasy Friday here very shortly, but I'm glad that I could have this presentation. We could have this talk. I uh, didn't think I was going to cry today. I'm sorry, Chris. I didn't mean to make you cry. <laughs> but we have to talk about it. We're sharing, learn some stuff. Appreciate you. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate the Twitch community for giving me this platform. <laughs> <laughs> talk about stuff <laughs> it's pretty awesome it's pretty awesome all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna take a quick break um and then we're gonna get into some final fantasy all right so thank you for joining for this talk and i've got i think jumping jacks i gotta roll for <laughs> hell yeah they are trans rights are human rights absolutely absolutely all right brb friends brb